Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about dictionaries in Python. So we have talked about variables, we have talked about list, set and tuples. So we'll talk about list. So list is a collection of elements, right? So they are, so basically it's an ordered list, right? So you have all the elements in sequence. Uh, then we have set which doesn't maintain the sequence. So it depends, right? If you want all the values, of course you will go for list. If you want the unique elements, of course you will go for set. But then think about this, when you have list, all the values are fetched or you can fetch the values with the help of index numbers. Uh, so that's one thing. Second, what if you want to specify a different type of index for it? Example, let's say if you have a list of five values and if you want to fetch the third one, of course you have to say use three. But then sometimes it makes sense to have a different key for each element. Uh, example phone book so if you want to fetch a number you will use a name right so you search by name and you get a number and officially if you talk about the dictionaries so if you want to understand the meaning of a word you go to that page and you look at the word and you understand the meaning of it uh, so if you can have this type of concept where you have a key and a value so every value will have a special key given by you not normal numbers so if you want to achieve that in Python, of course you have to use dictionary itself, the concept. To understand that, let me open the IDLE and here let's create a dictionary. So how do we do it? So let me create a simple dictionary, I will name it as data. And then the way you can use that is with the help of curly brackets. So normally we in list we used to use square brackets, but here we have to use curly brackets. Uh, in this, we have to specify two things, not just a value, but also a key, right? So key and a value pair. Now, of course, you can use any key here. It's just that the key should be immutable type. Okay, so it should be unique and it should be immutable. Uh, so you can use string, you can use numbers. So here I will use numbers for numbers first. And here I will say, let's say one, that's my key. And if you want to specify the value, you have to say one colon and you have to specify the value. Uh, maybe I will use my name here. So I will say Naveen, that's the value. And then I will again use uh, two as a key and then I will use a different name here let's say Kiran and let's say we have so let's let me just skip three there and let's use four and here I will use uh, let's say Hirsch so we have this three key and value pair and it becomes a dictionary now so if I say enter and if I say data you can see we have a key and a value pair okay something is missing no everything is there but how will you fetch a particular value? See, saving this doesn't make any sense, right? So you have a key and a value, but how will you use it? Now it makes sense when you want to fetch a particular value. So let's say I want to fetch Hirsch here. Now in this case, if you want to fetch Hirsch, you have to say data, and then you have to use a square bracket in which you will mention the key, right? Because Hirsch is a, va Hirsch is a value, right? And if you want to fetch a particular value, you have to use key. And in this case, the key is four. So if I say enter, you can see we got hush. That's how we use it. We have to specify the key to fetch the values. Uh, not just not just four, we can also specify one. It will give me Naveen. Uh, but what if, if I give a value like three? Now in this case, the moment you say three, you got an error, right? Now why you got the error is because we don't have any uh, key with three, right? So that's the error. Uh, in fact, we have one more way of fetching these values. So we can say data dot, uh, you can also use functions here. So if you can say uh, get, in fact, if, if, if you say control space, you can see we have so many functions, we have clear. So basically clear will clean the entire dictionary. So you can do that, but not now. Uh, it will empty my dictionary, I don't wanna do that. Uh, you can also use get to fetch the values. Uh, we can use pop to remove the values and uh, we will talk about set default as well. But as of now, let me just use get and here, we can specify a particular index. So in, in this case, if I specify one, you can see we got Naveen. The same thing you can do for two and four. But what if, if I use get on three? Now this time you can see we have not got any error. We got, I mean, we got nothing, but at least not the error. Uh, so of course we can use this way of doing it, right? You can fetch the values. The only thing is it will give you error. Or you can say get, it will give you nothing. Uh, if you want to print what it returns, so if I say data dot get if I pass three, now in this case it will print none. Of course, you don't have any data or a value with or index number with three. Uh, okay, but then what if you want to print something uh, in case the index is missing? So let's say uh, I will want I want to print one. I want to print one, but what if you don't have any key with one? In this case, you can give a comma and you can specify the value you want to print. So let's say if, if, if you don't have, uh, 
If you don't have one as a key, it will print not found. Let me just copy this thing so that I can use it later. Uh, if I say enter, you can see we got Naveen. Now why we got Naveen is because we do have a key with one. Uh, okay, let me just try the same thing with three now. Uh, and you can see we don't have this three key in the, in the dictionary. So if you say enter, you got not found. So there's one way of returning a data uh, where you don't have it. Of course, when you go to Google and if you search for something, or if you uh, go to internet and if you open the browser, if you, if you search for something, if your page is not found, it will print not found. It will not give you a blank page. Uh, of course, that doesn't make any sense, right? Okay, so we got this list and this is working here. So what else we can do here? Uh, what if you can create a dictionary with the help of list? So let me create two lists here. So first I will say keys, that's my, that's my list of keys. And of course it should be unique. So normally we can also use set here, but then let, let's use list. Uh, so I will say keys of, uh, so keys will be of names. Uh, and then the, and then we can create a list of values where you have all the languages. So let's say Naveen loves Python, Harsh loves Java, so something like that. So I, can, I will say Naveen, that's my first name. And then of course I will use Kiran and then of course I will use Harsh. So we got these three names and if I say enter and here I will say, uh, values, not value. Yeah, let's say values equal to, and then the first language. So Naveen loves Python. Uh, Kiran, let's say Java, and Hirsch, let's say JavaScript. So we got these three names and we got the three uh, three languages. And if I say enter, of course we got a list here. I want to merge these two lists into a dictionary. So I want to create a new dictionary here. Uh, let me again say data. I don't know why I love this name data. So this data will be a dictionary of a combination of key and value pair of this two list. In this case, if you want to do that, you have to use, so you have to say zip, you have to zip these two values. So I will say uh, keys comma values. That's done, right? But then you need to do one more thing. You have to convert this zip into a dictionary. And for that, you have to use dictionary as a function. And if you say enter, I hope it will work. So if I print, if I try to print data, you can see we got the output. So we got Naveen, Python, Kiran, Java, and Harsh JavaScript. So that's how you can merge two lists into a dictionary. But what if you want to add a new value here? Uh, something like this. I want to add, uh, let's say Monica. So Monica loves uh, C Sharp. So how will you add that in this particular dictionary? Uh, we can actually add data very easily. So example, if I try to print, uh, Monica here. In fact, let's let's try with uh, Kiran first. Do we have Kiran in the list or in the dictionary? Yes, we have. You can see we, when you say Kiran, we got Java. But the same thing if you do with Monica. And if you say enter, we got an error. It's because of course we don't have Monica in the dictionary. So let's add it. So I will say data and here I will say Monica. And let's assign a language, whatever language you love. Let's say uh, C sharp. And if I say enter, let's try now. Let me just print the data. And if, of course, if you can see at the end, we got Monica as well. So that's how you can add value. Can we delete values? Of course we can. So we can say, I want to delete Hirsch from this dictionary. So I will say del, del, del. And you have to mention data. In the bracket, you have to mention the key. So I will say Hirsch, done. Let me print data. And you can see we, we have removed Hirsch from the dictionary. It's so simple, right? That's how you work with the dictionary. Now, if you want to understand a bit of advanced concepts here, we can have a dictionary as a value in the dictionary itself. We can have a list as a value in the dictionary itself. Something like a nested dictionary, something like a list inside a dictionary. Let's see what I'm talking about. So what I will do here is, let me just clear this screen. So let's use a fresh screen here. So what I want to create is a new dictionary which will have dictionaries and lists inside it. So I will say prog. So this will have a list of programming languages with their IDEs. Uh, so I will create a dictionary here and let me assign the language first. So I will say JavaScript. Now, of course, JavaScript, we have multiple IDs available. I will say, let's say, let's use Atom there. Uh, the next thing we have is C Sharp here. And then for C Sharp, let's use Visual Studio. And let's say for the next one, let's say we have Python. Uh, we have to put that in single quote. Python and then Python. So we can use two IDs. In fact, I love to work on PyCharm. But we can also use subline. Uh, so I will use a list just for this, just for the example. Uh, so we can say PyCharm and we can also use sublime. And what next? We can have one more here, 
which is Java. Now for Java itself, you know, depend upon what about if you're working on Java SE, you'll be, you, you can use NetBeans. If you're working on Java EE, you can use Eclipse. Uh, so what I want to do here is for Java, I will use another dictionary and this will have, so based on what you want. So if you want to work on uh, Java SE, of course you will prefer to work on, I just hope I'm using this right single quote. It's very tricky, you know, when you work on this type of things, when you have single quotes and double quotes. Okay, so I will say NetBeans. That's my first list. I will give a comma. Oh, that's my first dictionary. Oh, okay. It's not comma, it should be colon. So Java, uh, Java SE, it, it is uh, it's NetBeans. And then I'll give a comma. And here I will say Java EE. In this case, I will be using Eclipse. I know it's tricky. So what we're trying to do is we are trying to put a list inside a dictionary as a value, and then we are putting a dictionary inside a dictionary. So that's tricky. I will say enter and just to verify. Yeah, so you can see everything is working. Now, what's the advantage of doing this? So if you want to understand which IDE we can use for JavaScript, you can simply say prog JavaScript and it says Atom. Uh, you can do it for uh, Python as well. So you can say Python and you can see we got two. In fact, you can also specify the index number here, which one you want. So I can say Python and maybe you can use uh, one and you can see we got the index one, which is sublime. Uh, so they can do that. So we can, we can play with, with this uh, list here. But what if you specify Java? In this case, if you say Java, you can see we got a dictionary itself as the output. Uh, but what if you want it for Java EE? In this case, you will say prog and you will say Java. And then here you can say Java EE. It's that simple. So from Java, I want to specify Java EE and you got Eclipse. So yeah, it, it is cool to work with, right? So we have dictionary in Python and you can use it for storing the data in this format where you have key and a value pair. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me in the comment section and do subscribe for the videos. Bye-bye.